So, at the risk of losing monetization for my YouTube video channel, I've decided that I need to become a little bit more politically correct about things. So today we're going to talk about proper makeup for a prepper. So if you've come here thinking that we're going to be discussing all the proper application techniques for eyeshadow and eyeliner and your foundation um, and the, the blush that you're going to use, that kind of stuff, you're sorely mistaken. The proper makeup for a prepper is really intestinal fortitude, the ability to organize and plan. The, uh, uh, the commitment that's necessary to make it all come together. I can't stress this kind of stuff enough. Prepping is a lifestyle. It goes much farther and much beyond just picking up a few pieces of fancy gear that you see advertised here or there the latest flashlight, the, the, the latest uh, folding knife, uh, the coolest new backpack that's out there. Yeah, it's good to have the tools that you need for prepping, but you really got to have a commitment and you've got to have the stick to to make prepping become a reality for you. Given the state of the current affairs, stuff that's going on in the country, stuff that's going on in the world today, natural disasters, man-made um, conflagrations, you name it, we're going to need to be able to become a lot more self-sufficient than we ever have been. I do believe that there will become a day when the S does hit the fan and that we're going to have to rely on ourselves primarily to get through those kind of disasters. And the way we can do that is very simply through intestinal fortitude, through a commitment, through setting goals for your prepping activity, making sure that you've got the right kind and enough food to get you and your family through not just 72 hours, the floods in Texas have lasted already well beyond 72 hours, and they're not even out of the darkness yet, for crying out loud. So 72 hours, yeah, it's a good place to start, but it should not be the end goal for you. Two weeks, one month, three months, six months, yeah, that's the goals that you should be setting for yourselves, depending on your budget, depending on your level, depending on your size of your family. But you need to be planning to have enough food that you enjoy eating, that you are um, able to eat and digest properly, that you know how to prepare, that your family is going to eat, so that you can survive for be well beyond that 72-hour, three-day period. They're not getting that done in Texas right now because it, there's, there's folks that are still being rescued by boat in areas around Houston. And it's, that's, it's pretty sad. My heart goes out to those people. But to be truly self-sufficient, you've got to have not only the food, but you've got to have water. Well, look at it, just what happened in, in Houston. I see that Anheuser-Busch um, stopped making beer, bottling beer, and just did water. So they filled up their cans with water, and they distributed them. Now, I have also seen other people on the other side trying to sell a case of water for $99. How about that? Yeah, those, those folks... Um, yeah, the, the, the good times and bad times, I guess, really can be a stretch. But if you've got your water taken care of, and you've got a way to replenish it, and you've got a way 
to filter it and sterilize it so that it's consumable water, you're going to be well ahead of the curve on that. So you got food, water, shelter. Shelter is going to come in pretty handy for the preppers. Folks that I see going on in the Texas floods right now in the Houston area, um, they're, they're trying to take shelter in um, arenas and uh, places like that, and those places are getting flooded out. Well, if in the event that we get another thousand year hurricane with the floods that have been going on right now in Houston, um, and there's enough time in advance to get out of Dodge, get out of Dodge. Get to the high ground. Get off the coast. Don't hang around and think, yeah, I'm going to be tougher than this crazy old storm because that's not the right way to be thinking. You've got to be strategic in your planning. You've got to be tactical in your planning. You've got to have a bug out plan and you've got to be ready to exercise that plan, practice that plan, so that when the time comes, you can get to high ground. You can get out of the path of danger, whether it's a hurricane, tornadoes, doesn't really matter. So when we're talking about the makeup, the proper makeup for a prepper, it's got to be organizational skills. It's got to be the ability to plan and plan ahead. It's got to be the ability to, and the commitment to practice those plans so that when the time comes, you can get the job done, protect yourself, protect your family, and really understand deep down in your heart what your level of commitment really is, and it does take a huge commitment. This is the Prepared Suburbanite with just some thoughts about the proper makeup for a prepper.